As a photographer of a certain age now, and having started photography in my teens, I started out with a manual film camera. A Pentax P30 was my first SLR camera. I actually bought this particular model as it was quite unique at the time. It had two exposure modes, full manual and full program mode. This meant the camera could also be used as a, a simple point and shoot where the camera worked out both the shutter speed and the aperture for you, just like green auto mode. I chose this camera as despite reading all the photography magazine articles explaining about the exposure triangle and aperture choices, I just didn't get it. None of it made sense to me. What the hell was an f-stop when it was at home? So the P30 seemed ideal for me as a complete beginner who didn't understand all this technical stuff. However, I only owned that camera for about two weeks from new before it all became clear. It was simply a matter of actually using the camera that all those weird F number settings and, and shutter speed fractions all made sense. Now I get it. So I just ended up using the camera in full manual mode thereafter for the next two years. Waste of time having a program mode. This camera was soon replaced by the complete opposite of that. The all singing, all dancing flagship Canon at the time, the Canon T90. Camera that I still have. But when I wanted to turn pro, I, I made the move to medium format and therefore I had to go back to a full manual camera again. No auto exposure, no auto focus, no motor drive, no built in meter either. No auto ISO either, as it was a film camera an all manual camera then. And this makes me wonder if cameras have become too sophisticated these days. They do it all for us and maybe they actually do too much for us. Are we losing and forgetting about some of the key skills in photography? So to look at this another way, I now drive an automatic car and most new cars do have an automatic gearbox. And all electric cars are automatic, no gears to change with a, a clutch pedal at all. I'm not sure I could even drive a manual car smoothly if I had to now. But this is supposedly progress, whereas photography is still an art form, as far as I'm concerned anyway, a skill. And personally, I don't want to lose those key skills. So is digital slowly killing the art of photography? Maybe. So. Let's take a look at some of the key culprits of this. The biggest improvement in digital cameras compared to older film ones is the rear LCD screen. This allows us to frame up the shot with live view, check the exposure with a live histogram before taking the shot, and then double check it all afterwards. But why? We can use the viewfinder, of course, instead, and I know a lot of photographers prefer framing with the viewfinder and therefore wouldn't buy a camera that didn't have one. So the exposure settings are visible in the viewfinder too. So you can check the shutter speed and aperture settings based on the meter reading and shoot with confidence this way instead. So if that's the case, why do we check the result immediately after? Why do we chimp? Why do we need to chimp. I was always confident I'd got my exposures correct with a manual film camera, but why aren't we as confident now with digital? With transparency film, the exposure had to be correct within one third of a stop. With digital, it's probably two to three stops. It can be this far out and still get a decent result. Does the LCD screen just make us lazy then and not confident in our abilities? Should the screen be set off as default when the camera is shipped out? Shouldn't it only be required to access the menus and nothing else? The LCD screen is perhaps making us lesser photographers. Then there's autofocus. Now, autofocus in our cameras is quick, reliable and easy to use, though not entirely infallible. Sometimes we do have to switch to manual focus, but are we putting in the practice for those odd occasions when we have to do this ourselves? Uh, and why don't we do it more often? If you shoot with your camera on a tripod, or if you're a street photographer who likes to zone focus and preset your focus manually, then you may rarely use autofocus at all. But what about everyone else? Why is autofocus constantly improving instead of us improving? 
improving our technique. Why do cameras have eye detection and bird detection AF systems? If you shoot wildlife, why is the camera making this easier for you to do and not forcing you as the photographer to improve instead? Of course, we don't have to use these features if we don't want to, but we're certainly paying for them when buying a new camera. Next is Auto ISO. Again, this is a feature we probably all use for convenience. I use it these days as I can now program the camera to adjust this to when I would normally do it myself. I can set this to increase the ISO when the shutter speed reaches a certain lower limit that I have set in camera, just as I would decide to do if doing this manually. But why don't I just do it myself then? It was never much of a hassle to do it when shooting film, Back then I, I put a set speed of film in the camera, depending on the light conditions and the subject, and it stayed on that setting for the next 36 exposures. I couldn't change it. Changing the ISO now can be done for each individual shot, and the camera may decide to do just that. I suspect there's many photographers out there that aren't even fully aware of what ISO they may need to be using and when, or what their camera is setting for each picture. The camera may change the ISO when the light has reached a, a certain level, but as the photographer, are you aware of that too? Do you know how low a shutter speed you can safely shoot at before camera shake kicks in? And you would need to raise the ISO to compensate. Maybe the camera is doing this too early with its default setting. If you don't know your safe lower limit of shutter speed to keep the ISO low, you should. Now there's been some new retro style camera releases of late that have an old fashioned ISO dial on top, prompting you to set this manually. Maybe this is a good thing. I did a, a podcast recently as part of my E6 subscription where I questioned the idea of these new retro cameras and who they're actually aimed at and, and why they're being produced as they are. Maybe the camera manufacturers want us to get back to using the basic skills again and can see the value in that. Value for them in camera sales and value for us in appreciating again the core skills of photography. And what about auto white balance? So if you shoot JPEGs only, you need to shoot using auto white balance. If you shoot RAW, you don't. But let me ask you this, if you shoot RAW, and change the white balance when processing the image, why do you do it this way round and not in camera? And therefore, how do you have your white balance set on the camera? Is it set to auto? Have you ever set it manually yourself in camera when shooting? Are you fully aware of how the white balance works then and what the camera does when it actually changes it? If not, then you need to try doing this in camera. It's important. Now I don't use auto white balance in camera. Instead, I shoot with the camera on the sunny white balance setting and I never ever change it from this. So why would this be? Well, all my images on the camera's LCD screen, which of course I never look at, won't they look a bit odd? Well, yes, they do. And I'm glad of that. I'm glad I see the changes. It shows I've taught myself how the white balance corrects the natural light. Actually, I, I learned this from using film back in the day, which was the same as looking the camera in the sunny white balance setting. But when I moved over to digital, it just seemed to make sense to continue this theory. If you don't know what your camera does to your images when the light goes from, say, sunny to overcast, then you too need to set your camera to the sunny white balance mode. Or if you don't change your camera to the cloudy white balance setting, if and when it goes overcast, but instead leave the camera to do this for you, then the camera is obviously changing something for you. It's doing this thing behind your back and you shouldn't let it do this. It's important for you to know why it's making this change. So the other automation feature that we've got so used to on our cameras is the auto exposure modes and especially what I would call automatic metering. Now, manual exposure mode is using the camera in its basic form. This mode is useful for overriding the camera's initial meter result for getting more creative results or for locking the exposure for a set of images. 
It's not one I often choose to use actually, instead preferring aperture priority combined with adjusting exposure with the exposure compensation dial. So again, I only use aperture priority for convenience. So full manual is a mode I feel I should embrace more to complete the core basic skills of my photography. Now, I know most of my cameras also offer a range of metering modes, yet my default is matrix metering or evaluative metering, as it's also known. One's easier to say, and I use that combined with the histogram. However, back when I shot medium format, I used separate handheld meters to either measure incident light, which is the light falling on my subject, rather than reflected light, as cameras do, which is better for accuracy. But for ultimate control, I also had a handheld spot meter. Now my digital cameras offer spot metering, as so do yours, but how many of us really use this? Did you even know your camera had this option? Do you know how to use this metering mode? It's not quite as simple as just selecting a precise area of the scene to, to take a reading from. And maybe I'll do a video about this unique metering mode to, to show you how to use it. But if you want the full photography experience, this too is something to consider using. It's probably one of the most underused features on cameras these days, I reckon. Matrix metering just makes things too easy for us. It's these features then that we have got so used to that I feel are, are spoiling the art of photography in a way. These are all important factors of photography and are part of creating images as a photographer. What was relevant in the film days is as important and relevant today. It's not all moving with the times and progress. So this has made me think again and analyze my own workflow. As I say, I never shoot on auto white balance and therefore I do understand what the camera would otherwise correct and why it's doing that. I'm starting to switch off the auto ISO on my cameras and going back to setting this myself again. It's as relevant and important as choosing my aperture and I would never leave the camera to do that. I want to start making this choice again myself. I'm going back to manual focus as much as I can. It's part of the process of using my camera. I'm seeing it as an enjoyable thing to do, to, to see my subject fall into perfect focus as I turn the focus ring on my lens. A feature, a dial, an adjustment that I have long ignored. Luckily, I have not really fallen into the habit of reviewing my images immediately after I've taken them on the rear LCD screen. But maybe it's time to take that a bit further, remove the temptation completely and switch the rear screen off. If I'm making any errors, I can review those mistakes later on the computer and then just make sure that I don't do them again next time. Not reviewing my images straight away forces me to spend more time and effort composing and exposing my images in the first place, before I press the shutter. This should improve my photography. It seems a better way to do that. So I'm falling in love with photography again, just as I did as a 16 year old in my first SLR. As fans of this channel, I would love to know that you too are doing the same. Let's leave all the modern tech for those other YouTube channels and let this one be about the inspiration of the basic art and skills of photography. We're not downgrading our cameras or going backwards. No, we're trying to improve as photographers, becoming more skilled, more confident, more competent with our cameras. We're doing photography. So let me know how you get on.